Hi everyone and welcome back to a brand new piercing video. So today's one is going to be about a topic that's a little bit bizarre but I really want to talk about it just because I want to see if it's different depending on where you are or where you grew up or just like I'm just very curious about this. I remember growing up and there were so many piercings that were kind of like you were gay if you had this or you were straight if you had this or this meant it was straight and this meant gay and I thought it'd be quite interesting to find out you know if you guys have the same thing or if it was different from where you are. Yeah so I'm going to straight into this video. So the first one I do want to talk about is earlobe piercings. Now, oh my gosh, I've always been told, always been told that when you're growing up, if you got your ear pierced in your left ear, you were straight. If you got your ear pierced in the right ear, you were gay. And if you got it done in the both, you're a girl. Like only girls had both done. And that was how it was in my school. And we're talking about like the like the 90s and then like early like naughty time. I don't know if that's different where you were. I did get my left earlobe pierced when I was like five or six. And I don't think, obviously for me then, I didn't think about, oh, that's what guys and girls do. Like that wasn't a thing. But my mum obviously would have been like, let's get him on the left side because you know, that's what the guys do. Obviously I wasn't out as a gay person at six years old. <laughs> I find that really interesting actually because when I was in high school, my friend like Chris King at the time, um, he had his right earlobe done and he got ripped to shreds by the bullies. They were all like saying, oh, you're gay. Why have you got that done? That's what gays do. Oh my God, are you gay? And he was completely like obliterated just from having one earlobe done that wasn't seen as like the straight thing to do. So please comment down below where you're from. Is the left one considered the gay one or was the right one considered the gay one? Or like, you know, like, is that still a thing now? I don't know if that's a thing growing up. That was definitely was when I was young growing up in school. So the second one I want to talk about is eyebrow piercings. Now eyebrow piercings was only for men masculine men. That was what it was like. And like, if you're a guy, you would have your left eyebrow pierced. I'm not, I don't know if it was like, to me, I'm not sure if it was like one or two, but I generally saw people with their left eyebrows pierced. Even I got mine done on the left side when I was older. And that was always a guy thing to do, like a masculine guy, like not, not feminine thing. It was always a masculine kind of piercing to have. And if a girl had it done, you're a lesbian. No straight girl would ever have their like eyebrow pierced if they're, like, unless they were a lesbian. And I still feel like it kind of has that connotation now. Actually eyebrow piercings, like it's definitely like predominantly like a male thing to do. I remember growing up and like if you were a guy and you had your eyebrow pierced you were seen as like hard like you were like the hard man because you had your eyebrow pierced and on the flip side belly button piercings like belly button piercings were just for females. No one else could have it done like just females and if you're a guy that had it done you were a faggot. Not just like a gay person you were like a, like you know really feminine really camp like me because I got my belly button pierced but like if you're a guy and your belly button pierced like you weren't just gay you were like a full-on queeny faggot. So next on the list is nipple piercing. Things. So we were always told growing up again um, that if you were like a straight man, you would get the left side done. And if you were gay, you would get both of them done. I kind of feel like that's still in society now. I feel like like nipple piercings with gay people is they tend to get both done because it heightens sensitivity and gives it more like a, like there's a, there's a slight connotation with leather daddies and kind of like uh, the leather community and more sort of like bondagey stuff with having like both your nipples pierced. Like, a lot of straight guys would just get one side done. My brother has one of his nipples done. I remember actually talking to him about it when we were like obviously this is a long long time ago and he had his nipple done and it was very much like I had to get this one done really because the other side's gay and like that was still like a a thing then. This is like maybe like 2005-ish time. Now the next one, I am actually guilty of myself. And I, I, I sometimes do this and I have to check my reality and be like, actually stop being so, stop being so judgmental, not judgmental, but like instantly sort of like equating this, but it's tongue piercings. Whenever, ever I see a guy having a tongue piercing, I instantly think, Puff. Like that's the first thing that comes into my head. I know, I know it's ludicrous because obviously straight guys have the tongue pierced. Like I know guys who aren't gay who have the tongue pierced. Like it's not a exclusive, you know, LGBT thing. But I cannot be the only one who does this. Please again, tell me down below. I bet you do this as well. You see a guy with a tongue piercing and think, puff. And obviously people equate tongue piercings to giving oral sex. And it's just like, that's kind of the way people see it as like, I, cause I do, I do. and. It was always, to me, it was always a girl piercing. And if a guy had it, it's, it's gay. Like that's always the way it has been growing up. And it's kind of ingrained in my head now. That's kind of the way that it is. <laughs> oh God. So the next one is nose piercings. So I, we, we, this is a little bit more of a convoluted one. In school, we used to say that if a guy had his nose pierced, if it was a hoop, he was straight and it was fine. But if it had like a little stud and it was a gem or something, then the person was gay. That was always like a very, very, very heavily emphasized in school. Um, I never knew anyone who had a nose piercing in school, like a guy, but it was always kind of like the thing you would speak about. Like if a guy had a nose ring, he was like a rocker. If he had a stud, 
He was a puff. It's funny how you would say a rocker and then a gay person. Like that's the two, that's the only two options. So the next on the list is Monroe piercings. So Monroe piercings is like one that just goes here. It's like the little like mole here, like Monroe, Marilyn Monroe had, which is why it's called Monroe piercing. And again, that was definitely a, if you're a guy and you had that, you're gay. Like no straight guy would have a Monroe piercing. I, I still feel like, again, that's, that's kind of the way that it is now in society. Like if you're a guy and you have a Monroe piercing, you're seen as like, a puff. Although I do feel like Monroe piercings have kind of died out. I don't really see that many people with them. Um, it's definitely seen in England, uh, maybe not where you are, but in England, it's seen as a very, very chavvy thing to do. And it's um, not the nicest thing to be equated to. But um, unfortunately, a lot of chavvy girls have a Monroe piercing. That's kind of like a thing that a lot of the chavs do. So next on the list is Labrette piercings. Now in school, a lot of the emo kids, a lot of the emo guys who had like the dark hair and swished, like wasn't seen, back then it wasn't really seen as like a gay thing. That was like the emo thing. So they would have like one or two little piercings here on the lip or like spider bites like what I've got. But if a guy had a Labrette piercing in the center, that meant he was gay because that's like the gay one to do. So like you could get your lips pierced like either side or whatever. And like you're sort of seen as like the emo kid, or, like a straight guy or slightly alternative. But if you had a labrette piercing, you were gay. Like the labrette one was the gay one to get. Again, I'm not really too sure why, um, but at least in my school, in my area that I grew up in, labrette piercings was seen as like the gay piercing. What I find really funny about the earlobe piercings as well is like a lot of straight guys and things would have like the top of their ear done here, but that wasn't seen as like a gay thing. It was only the earlobes, like right or left side would be like considered that's gay or straight. But up the top here, like it was like, it was just never seen as like a gay piercing, like anyone had that. I don't really know why that became a thing. So final one for this video is a tragus piercing. Now a tragus piercing was always seen as like a gay thing to do. Like it was only for girls or for gays. Like it was girls or gays and that was it. Like straight guys wouldn't get the tragus pierced. And again, it would come down to the thing of like, it's kind of like a small part of your ear. It seemed to be feminine. Like I don't understand where, like to me, it doesn't really make sense that that, that was why it was like a gay thing, but it was definitely seen as like, if you're a guy and had a tragus pierced, it meant you were gay. So please, please, please comment down below and tell me if you have any differences between where you grew up and what like was called gay piercings or what was called, you know, only guys or girls got this. I'm really interested to see what you feel on this topic. Obviously do whatever the hell you want and don't care what gender you are, what sexuality you are, like do what you want. Cause now, like nowadays, obviously people are definitely more open-minded. Like I said, this was definitely of a time of when I grew up, definitely like, in the, like the late nineties to early noughties. This is the kind of things that were kind of said um, when I was in school. So we're talking like 10, over 10 years ago. So I'm old now. But anyway guys, make sure you do come and follow me on my Instagram and Twitter and stuff. There is a link in the top of the description. So make sure you come and follow me on all them. We can have chat and have fun. Please hit the like button because it does really help me out. And comment down below, tell me all of your thoughts. A massive shout out to Kelly, Stephanie and Teresa who are my top three patrons. I love you all so much. Patreon link down there as well if you want to my Patreon and help support me and you know, help me do this full time because I, I need the help. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I love you. Thank you for being amazing and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.